my community placement was at a social enterprise project uh, near to where I live. I'm very familiar with the project, or at least I thought I was, and I'll say more about that a bit later on. It's land-based activities, and their, their strap line is growing lives and releasing potential. It helps people who are struggling with life for all sorts of reasons, and its purpose is to try and bring hope and restoration. And it does a brilliant job. Um, it's uh, progressed so well in the last few years that the project has actually been able to invest in two properties in the city, which is about uh, two and a half miles away. And they have about nine residents. Well, nine residents, actually, not about nine. They have nine residents because they've got nine rooms. Um, so what they're able to do when folk are referred to them and the folk are normally homeless people or recovering addicts, um, struggling with all sorts of uh, mental issues. When people are referred to them, they are interviewed and then allocated a place in one of the homes. But a condition is that they will attend this project four days a week. And um, the project says that it provides a caring family yet work orientated environment with Christian values at the core of what they do. And they aim to promote life skills through land based activities and equip and empower people to lead a meaningful and dependent, independent life. So when I was thinking about my community placement, this seemed uh, an ideal location uh, for me to go to. And the plan was that I would basically uh, spend my time observing, joining in with what was going on over the course of the week. As I say, it's land based. It's very, uh, <laughs> you might almost use the term rough and ready, actually, when you arrive. There's nothing very sort of salubrious or polished about it but they work with uh, several volunteers who were drawn from local churches who are totally committed to the work that they're doing. Uh, I was going to say that it's it's low tech. It's not low tech, it's no tech. So I decided that in keeping with the no tech approach of the project which I was at for my placement, I would be, other than this presentation, no tech as well. So there's no PowerPoint from me. Um, and I hope that as you see the colour of my eyes and as you potentially uh, witness some of the emotion that I had during the course of the week, you'll see why I've decided against any any PowerPoint of any sort. As someone at the recent uh, residential weekend said, so sometimes with PowerPoint, there's no power and there's no point. And, um, and that was what I concluded about my presentation for today. So uh, what went well? Um, in terms of my uh, critical evaluation of the activities I was involved in. Um, so I approached the week uh, prayerfully and uh, carefully. Um, I chatted to the director of the project and although I was nervous and was going to feel a bit out of my depth, I felt that I was up for it. Um, so I arrived bright eyed and bushy tailed. Um, I'd spent quite a bit of time thinking about the, the story of Mephibosheth in 2 Samuel chapter 9 and the journey which Mephibosheth went on from this, this desert place of Lodibar where he lived through to ultimately being able to dine in the palace. And I thought, well, in my mind, um, this is our dream and our hope and our prayer for all the people that we um, connect with. And... Um, that's my, that was my prayer for good soil, that, uh, that during the course of the week they would get to know me and that somehow I would be able to play a part in them going on this journey too. I suppose I saw myself as a bit of a, a, bit of a good Samaritan really, <laughs> and I was I, swooping in and um, not necessarily with any major responsibilities, but just with an opportunity to, to get alongside them and talk to them. Um, 
the theme was community building and uh and I was asked if I'd get any ideas around how to open a discussion up around community building. And uh, so I thought a bit about that and contributed, uh, particularly using Psalm 133 verses 1 to 3. How wonderful, how beautiful when brothers and sisters get along. It's like costly oil and no, uh, flowing down head and beard, flowing down Aaron's beard, flowing down the collar of his priestly robes. It's a beautiful picture that I, I tried to paint in a little devotional uh, on the first day and they seemed to get it and although I'd been warned they wouldn't be very contributive and that they'd all be sitting on their phones they were actually and um, and also on that first day there was an outdoor trip planned to a local um, English heritage place which used to be a, a mighty fine stately home in the 1920s um, but actually was destroyed by fire. And the, the little meditation was, um, OK, so uh, how can beautiful things often be destroyed by events in our lives? And um, I tried to chat to the to the folk, the members of the, the project. And one guy in particular, I spoke to him. He'd obviously had a tough life before he arrived at the project. He was living in his car and um, and that was a very profitable afternoon. And then um, the next morning, I had a, a message fairly early on to say that uh, that one of the residents had actually passed away. One of the nine people who'd been there the previous day had died. And it was the guy who I'd been talking to who described to me that he'd been living in his car. And it was like whoa <laughs> hang on um so we it was such a shock and all of the gang were traumatized by it and we thought well we've got to change our approach now and um so th so the, the rest of the week can't can't progress as as we'd planned and um so i find myself in the, in the thick of this activity um and with no one really knowing what to do and how to create space for these folks. So, so um, I said, well, I, I could help a bit with that. So I led them through a, a liturgy, through this superb book, um, Every Moment Holy. Yeah, there's a liturgy in there about what happens when there's bereavement in community and how we can help people to process that. So armed with big sheets of paper and felt tip pens and candles and a, and a, a crucifix I, I turned up and and basically I suppose helped to facilitate um, lament and a little ritual around helping them to express how they were feeling and it was one of the most privileged experiences um, I've ever been through and um, I think as I reflect on my time with the project um, it was such an incredible learning point for me because I went along armed with all these ideas and um, what I was going to do. But then I had to change tack halfway through as I tried to support the project and um, incredibly humbling. Um, and I was thinking quite a bit about the weekend we've just had at Cudsden about colonial approach or cultural, uh, contextual approaches. And I thought, you know, I, I went along almost a little bit colonial with what I thought I could give and do and deliver. And I ended up realizing actually I needed a contextual approach. I needed to enter into their sadness and bereavement with them. And Vincent Donovan's book, uh, Christianity Rediscovered was a powerful uh, help to me as I reflected on the fact that all those people in that project are they are an extension of me as he discovered with the Maasai's you know, he thought he was taking in the gospel and he discovered that it was already there I discovered the gospel in their brokenness and um, during that week and I just spent a lot of time sitting there listening to them um, having some incredibly humbling conversations with people whose lives were broken um, one person has got six children she's 31 and she doesn't see any of them they're all they've all been taken away from her and that sums it up so um 
for me, as I reflect theologically, as I evaluate theologically, I see it as an incredibly enriching experience. And um, I'm so grateful for the opportunity.